Yes, greetings. It's Vision here representing for Blurred and I hope everyone is having a blessed and productive day. I hope everyone watching this video right now to find love, happiness, peace and joy in their life, in their homes, in their relationship and in their everyday activity. Yes, my people, life is very important, life is very precious and we need to start give thanks more and complain less. Because when you really check it, if you really look at it, you know, we have everything we need in life, you know. Oh, Father God has created this world, we have everything we need in life. So we just have to look at life at a different perspective and a different angle, you understand? And then we will see the true meaning of life. Okay, so with that said and done, let's get to the news. And with any topic or situation like this, it's a very sensitive situation and we have to treat it with care so i'm going to try to deliver the message or the news as sensitive as possible i can because losing a loved one is not an easy feeling it's not an easy time for anyone to be experiencing that so we as the people looking on are not in the are, are i may say not in the, the same situation we have to treat these kind of things with, 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 with care and, and, and compassion because it's not an easy thing for anyone to lose a loved one. So I get into the news right now. I'm reading from the Washington Post. Okay, so let's get into it. Former New Orleans Saints player Glenn Foster Jr. died in police custody Monday in Alabama days after he was pulled over for an alleged traffic violation, his father said. The 31-year-old athlete and father of four died of unexplained causes when he was in a Pickens County Sheriff's Office transport between the jail and a nearby medical facility. Ken Foster Sr. told the Washington Post in an interview Tuesday after news of Foster's death stirred questions and outrage from colleagues and fans. Family members said they did not get a chance to see the defense and turned entrepreneur from the time he was arrested Friday until he died Monday and are seeking answers. And here his father made another statement. I'm quoting. He's asking, What happened? We know nothing because we didn't have access to our son. We never got the chance to see him. Really, I can only imagine. It must be tough to find out that your family is in custody or even somewhere and you couldn't get to them and only to hear that, to hear that their loved one has passed away. That couldn't be a nice feeling, really and truly. I continue. The Pickens County Sheriff's Office referred to the post to Alabama State's Bureau of Investigation, which did not respond to a request for a comment. The county's coroner's office did not answer questions from the post but told the New Orleans Times that the case remains under investigation. The family will seek an independent autopsy. Foster Sr. said. Mr. Foster Sr. went on to say that his son, who was experiencing symptoms of bipolar disorder, told his family he was going on a business trip to Atlanta last week. On Friday while driving, Foster was stopped by the police who told his family he initially tried to flee. He was taken to the county's jail by police who informed his family Saturday, Foster Senior said. He was booked on counts of reckless endangerment, resisting arrest and attempting to elude police according to jail records. Foster Senior said the family explained to the reform police chief that his son, who had experienced a maniac episode in college, and again recently needed medical treatment for his mental health disorder and the chief agreed 
But when the chief and the family went to the jail to bring Foster Jr. to a University of Alabama facility in Birmingham, Foster Sr. said, are told, his son was involved in an altercation with another inmate and was now under the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. They were told the family members could not visit Foster Jr. in jail because of COVID-19 restrictions. Since Friday night, my son, who needed medical treatment for his maniac or bipolar episode, never received any treatment, Foster Sr. said. On Monday, a judge arranged for Foster Jr. to be taken to a facility about 30 minutes from the jail, Foster Sr. said. The sheriff's office tasked with transporting Foster Jr. told his family that there was no incident when he got into the police cruiser. Yet when he arrived at the medical facility, Foster Jr. was unresponsive and medical personnel were unable to revive him. His father said, he arrived to his death, Foster Cena said. I don't know what happened with him physically while he was in the jail because they wouldn't let us see him, Mr. Foster said. Mr. Foster Senior said he believed the sheriff's office was negligent because it was informed of his pre-existing condition but did not immediately provide medical help. Instead, Foster Jr. was charged with ad an additional crime while in jail, including robbery as part of an, of an alleged altercation incident. All the good things that he did, it looks like the county sheriff is doing things to assassinate my son's character, Foster Cena said. In addition, to assassinating him because they never let him get the medical help that any human being deserves. Since the news of Foster's death was the first reported by local media outlet Sports Figure and friends across the country paid tribute via social media. So after hearing of Foster Jr. passing, many of his friends went online to show their respect for their bro, for their brother, who has lost his life so unexpectedly. Here is a post made from one of his friends, um, Arthur L.A. Ray said, I'm quoting, woke up to sad news, was just talking to you after we played LSU. You accomplished great things in life and was on your way to do more. Gone, miss you, my dog, Glenn Foster Jr. Praying for your wife, kids, and family. Hashtag MC family. Love you, bro. Life too short. Hashtag rest up. And I just read a couple of a few more tweets from his loved ones and friends. I really can't find the words to properly express. Former teammates Terran Armstead tweeted. Rest in peace, Glenn Foster. You will be missed, bro. No words right now. Rest powerful, little bro. Tweeted by Cam Butner. My condolence to his family and friends. May his soul rest in peace. Okay, so Foster, who grew up in Chicago, played his college football for the University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign. In 2013, he was signed as an Anja free agent with the Saints playing on the NFL team until 2014 after an injury that year. In the year since, Foster and his wife raised four daughters aged seven months through nine years old in Baton Rouge, beginning several businesses including a coffee shop and a granite company, his father said. My son, instead of being dead in a morgue, should have been in a mental facility where they could have treated his mental illness, 
imposter Cena said, Now the fruit has fallen from the tree. Once it's on the ground, you can't pick it back. That's what they've done. They've snatched the life of my son. It's a sad one, truly. But my people, I would like to finish off the video by saying, just stay strong, stay positive, and remember, always try to give thanks, because the greatest thing to have is life. So thanks everyone for watching the video, and remember if you like this one, please give it a thumbs up, share, and comment please. And remember, if you love sports, if you're interested in sport athletic, any news about sports, remember, Blurred is the place to be, so please subscribe. Thank you. Take care. Stay blessed.